All right, you need a flight stick for Star Wars Squadrons. No question about it. I bought three of them and they are all from Thrustmaster. This is not a sponsored video. I just bought them because these were available and these are the ones that are recommended by the professionals who like to play yeah, flight sims. And yeah, they are all from different categories, right? So cheap, medium and most expensive one. And well, it's going to be interested to see what are the differences. Now, if you want to play Star Wars Squadrons on your PS4 or PS4 Pro together with your PSVR, then the choice is easy. It's going to be this here, the Thrustmaster Flight Hotas 4, because this is the only one which is compatible with the PlayStation VR. So get this one here. The link is down in the description below. For all of you who are going to play Star Wars Squadrons on the PC, you can choose any of these three and it's going to be interesting to see is it going to be worth it to pay these around 500 for the Thrustmaster Warthog, the most expensive and most probably the best one, or is the medium one good enough, the T1600 or 16000M, this is around $150, or should you just go for the cheapest $80? Thrustmaster Flight Hodas 4. We're going to find out in this video and let's start with the unboxing of these devices. Welcome back again here to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang and this channel is all about virtual reality. I'm bringing you unbiased and honest reviews of all the VR headsets, of all the VR accessories and you're getting the latest news. So if you want to see more videos just like this one here, absolutely subscribe to this channel and click on the bell button so that you don't miss anything. And here we start with the Thrustmaster T-Flight Hodas 4. And again, this is for PS4 and PC. So if you want to play Squadrons on your PSVR, on your PlayStation 4 or 4 Pro, you absolutely need to buy this one. The others you cannot use. All right, so this is the thruster of the T-Flight Hodas 4. And in my opinion, the first thing coming to mind here, there is too little resistance. It is too easy to move that thruster. But we're going to check this out later. Then we have buttons here and these are the PlayStation buttons. All right, let's have a look at the stick itself. So also we have a few buttons here for the thumb and those buttons are all right. I wouldn't necessarily say that these are the best buttons that I've ever pressed, but they are acceptable. Now, what's interesting about the T-Flight Hodas 4, first of all, the handling, it feels really good, but if you want, you can even change the resistance of this flight stick. So simply turn this wheel and then you will have more resistance for the flight stick itself. And I think that's a pretty good idea. So you can combine the thruster and the stick just like this. So it's totally up to you how you're going to use this and you only need one USB connection to connect this to your PC or to your PS4, of course. And well, that is pretty good. Next thing I did was check this out in Elite Dangerous and I can tell you it is really fun to use the T-Flight Hodas 4 in Elite Dangerous and yeah, it's a huge difference as compared to playing this with a joypad or with your VR controllers, of course. So this really works amazingly well and I loved it. And even for the thruster, before I told you there's very little resistance, actually in-game it was not such a huge problem for me because, well, I was holding that thruster most of the time to, yeah, to engage or to, to put the thrust back and that worked fine. And in the neutral position, when the thruster is in the middle, it's going to snap into place. So you actually always know when it's in its neutral position and you can easily find the neutral position for the T-Flight Hotas 4 and that is really good. Also for an arcade game like Squadrons, actually you don't need so many buttons like you do in a sim. So having not too many buttons, this might actually be an advantage for the T-Flight Hodas 4. And well, all the buttons have the name, so that is good. So I really like the T-Flight Hodas 4. All right, now we talk about the Thrustmaster t 16000 M. So this is a PC HOTAS. This one you will not be able to connect to your PlayStation. And this one is going to set you back around 150 to 200 US dollars, depending on where you find it. 
All right, so this is the thruster, and this looks way better than the thruster of the T Flight 4. Check out these buttons here, and uh, yeah, the whole kind of setup is totally different. This reminds us more of a real thruster, and there's also more resistance when you change the thrust, so this is way better. For the flight stick itself, we have a couple of buttons on the right side and on the left side, and well, on the bottom of the device, we do not have this wheel where you could increase the resistance, but you can change from left-handed to right-handed, and I think that's only for the buttons on the right and the left, but not for the stick itself, because it is still only for right-handed people, actually. Well, the buttons, well, the quality is kind of comparable to what we see with the T-Flight Hodas 4, so also not really amazing. Everything feels kind of plasticky, and yeah, no big differences, and for sure not double as good as the T-Flight HOTAS 4. One thing that is different though, we have a bigger range of motion here for the stick. Check this out. You can move it further to all directions. And here we are in Elite Dangerous with the T16000M. And I can tell you, yes, it feels great as well. It's so much fun to use HOTAS for these space action games. And also for the thruster, just as I thought, yes, it does feel better because you can more precisely set the thrust that you want to use here, right? However, in general, I would not say that this HOTAS is double as good as the T-Flight 4, right? Even though it is double as expensive, so for this one, no. And also for the thruster, in these kind of arcade games, I don't really think that the difference between the thrusters is so high and you don't actually need all of these buttons that you have here for the T16000M. So it is a great HOTAS, but it might be overkill if you just want to play squadrons. All right, let's get to the most expensive HOTAS that I could find, the HOTAS Warthog. This is gonna set you back $550 if you buy it from a B and H. And the package itself is already so heavy because everything is metal, but let's have a look ourselves. So this is the thruster, oh my God. Check this out, the quality is unbelievable. Check this, oh yes. So all the buttons, everything that you see here is metal, just like the real deal. This is not anymore about playing some computer games. This is for people who are really serious about their simulations, who play DCS and Microsoft Flight Simulator and so on, and it's just so nice. Also the resistance here that I feel, it feels just like the real thing. It's not a computer game anymore, and wow, it's just amazing. Now let's check out the stick. And the stick, you first have to assemble it, but it's really simple. Just, yeah, just screw this top part on the bottom part. And the stick itself, again, everything from metal, like clicking the buttons is just such a huge difference as compared to the other two HOTAS. It just feels real. Real, that's the right word to use here. The only thing, you cannot really twist it to the right and left like you could the other HOTAS sticks. So yeah, this is not really about playing a video game. This is about playing a simulation. Other than that, also about the resistance for the stick itself, feels great. And here we are now in Elite Dangerous with the Warthog. And wow, this is kind of overkill, right? To play this with the Warthog, but it's good. It feels really, really good and holding that metal stick in your hand is just a huge difference as compared to those plastic sticks of the other two HOTAS that I showed you in this video. Now a difference that I already told you about is that this doesn't twist to the left and right like the other HOTAS do. So if you want to have this kind of functionality, you must put this onto any of the other buttons on the stick. And well, there are lots of buttons on the stick, so you won't have problems doing that. But just to let you know, you cannot twist this stick. Now, if you're really, really serious about games and about simulations, there's no questions. You need to get the Warthog. The difference is just too mind-blowing in terms of build quality, in terms of how this feels in your hand, in terms of resistance. It's just the real deal. But anyways, for you, if you only want to play Squadrons, no question, you're not going to pay $550 for this HOTAS. 
All right, so let's get to the conclusion here. For Star Wars Squadrons, which of these HOTAS should you get? So if you want to play that on PlayStation VR, then absolutely you're going to get the T-Flight 4. This is totally fine, even though I thought the resistance was not good enough here for the thruster, but actually in-game it was kind of okay. And it felt really good. So PSVR for sure, you're going to get this one. But even if you are on PC, I believe that the T-Flight 4 is good enough for all of you who just want to get a HOTAS for Star Wars Squadrons and who are not the simming types who are going to play Microsoft Flight Simulator or any of these flight sims for a longer time and you simply want to have something for Squadrons which is better than the controller, than the normal controllers, definitely you can go here for the T-Flight 4. In-game, I had lots of fun even though this was the cheapest version here of these three. So yeah, I think it's good enough for most of you. So this one I can recommend. Then this one here, the T16000. So this is a bit more expensive, probably 150 to $200. So definitely nearly double than this. Is it double as good as the T-Flight 4? I wouldn't say so, honestly speaking. So when I was just playing Elite Dangerous, I actually didn't have such a huge difference in, in the feeling, in the play feeling. Yes, so there is more range of motion, but it didn't make it much better, I would say. So I would not say that you should absolutely go for this one because this is not double as good as this one, even though this is double as expensive as this one. There's no question though that this thruster is indeed better. So if you probably want to play other games more, if you're more the sim type and if you do want to play Microsoft Flight Simulator in VR later, then this might be better. Now this for sure is better than this here because here the resistance is not so nice, right? And here you can be sure that the thrust will be exactly in the position that you want it to be. But in general for the feeling, both is plasticky and no huge differences, I would say. Just here, the thruster is definitely better here. So if you need a great thruster for your Microsoft Flight Simulator, then this here is a good choice for you. And now, of course, we talk about the Warthog. This HOTAS just blew me away. There's absolutely no comparison between those plastic ones and this year, this is just unbelievable. Everything is metal, everything just looks and feels like the real thing. This is even not, not a game anymore. This is a serious simulation tool and um, everything, the build quality, all these things here, is, it just screams like the best. <laughs> yeah. So if you are really serious about your flight sim, then absolutely, I'm sure, there is no question you need to save that money and you need to go here for the Warthog. This is simply amazing. And uh, yeah, actually, when I was thinking about making this test and when I was buying all these things, I was sure I'm going to sell this off again, right? But it's kind of tough to let this go. This is unbelievable. And I'm sure I'm going to have a great time with this in VR. So if you are really, really serious about your simming game. There's no comparison. This here is simply the best. And yeah, you can absolutely tell the difference of this as compared to these two here. I really hope that this video was helpful for you and the links to all these devices, you're going to find them down in the description of this video. And if you buy one of these devices, I would be really happy if you bought through these links because these links are affiliate links. It's not going to be more expensive for you, but I do earn a little commission. And thanks to these commissions, I can buy things like this and show them to you. So this is basically how this channel works. I'm going to buy the stuff. I'm going to check it out, unbiased and honest, as you know. And well, then if this is helpful to you, I would be very happy if you buy the stuff through my links. And that's it. If this was helpful for you, give it a thumbs up. And I want to hear from you now. What kind of hotels are you going to buy for Star Wars Squadrons? Please do let me know in the comment section below. 
If you have not yet subscribed to MRTV and if you want more videos just like this one here, then absolutely subscribe to the channel and click on the bell button so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. That's it and I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode.